In the last video we talked about accommodation. And remember accommodation was just the ability to change the shape of the lens to make sure that we can actually pinpoint all of the actual light onto one point. So that's usually the back of the eye, in many cases a fovea. So we want to be able to, I can't read that, that's a fovea. Um, we want to be able to bend all the light onto one spot. But remember if it's close by or far away, then there's a difference in terms of the refractive power we need to make sure we have to bend it. It's more bending of light that needs to happen when it's close by than when it's far away because when it's far away they're all parallel and it's close. All the light rays come from different angles which means we need to have more of bending happening when it comes from close by and that means we need to have a lens which has more refractive power and we talked about that term refractive power in the last video quickly. The refractive power just means the ability or the power to bend objects. So refractive power would be the power to bend objects. Bend light, sorry, actually refraction often talks about light, not, not different objects, but so bend light. So the ability to the power to bend light. Now most of you might have seen a lens already, especially if you've done your dissections by now. So the lens itself will look like that. You can obviously tell it's transparent, which means it's see-through. That's important to, because light needs to be able to pass through it. Transparent. The question is what is actually what are the lens actually made up of? And that will help you to understand why a thicker lens will have higher refractive power. So what lenses are actually made up of? This would be kind of the lens dissected. Um, you can see there are these lens fiber cells. So there are some cells that make certain types of proteins. So these cells will be basically on the sides, in many cases the sides of the they might be on the sides of the lens. There will be cells that make a sp specific type of protein. And these are called the crystalline protein. So you might have heard of the lens often called the crystalline lens because they make the crystalline protein which will be all over the inside of the lens. And this here, is, first of all, is transparent which is why it's see-through. But This is what actually will refract. This is what will refract light. So this is what will refract light. So that means this protein is the thing that bends light in the lens. So you can imagine if we've got a flat, so if these orange dots here, these orange dots are your crystalline proteins. So I'm going to say CP for short, crystalline proteins. So you can imagine if you've got a flat lens, what that means is you're going to have maybe let's say only one, two, three, four, maybe four at most in a row of these proteins. I'm just using an example, obviously it would be much more than four. But if it's flat, there's less protein than, for example, if it were round, right? If it's rounder, like this, which is the shape when it's um, contracted, you might have, instead of having four of these, you might have seven or eight in a line. So if you can imagine light passing, whenever light hits one of these proteins, it's going to be a bit of bending happening, right? So a bit of bending, a bit of bending. Here, it's hit four, so four of these proteins before it's passed the lens. That means a certain amount of bending has happened. Whereas in this case, it's going to hit seven, so it's going to be more, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more, and the result, the final result, is that a rounder lens, which is this, a rounder lens, will cause more bending than a flat lens because it has more of this crystalline protein in it, or or not more, it has the same amount, but it's more concentrated in the round than it is in the flat. Right, so why is that all important? Again, remember we just go over the concept again of last time. So this is the same picture we had in the last video. The one we have our ciliary bottle, <laughs> ciliary bottle, um, ciliary body, which consists of the ciliary muscle, which is this part, the muscle, and then the ligaments. And the ligaments are the ones that will stretch or relax, depending on if the muscle is relaxed or it's stretched, uh, relaxed or contracted. Right, so it's saying compare which means we need to know the difference between the two, compare the change in the refractive power over the lens from rest to maximum accommodation. Right, so we say this here is going to be our rest. This is when the muscle are at rest, right? So they're relaxed. So when they're re when it's relaxed, the um, actual lens will be flat. And the reason why it was flat, remember, was because if the muscle is relaxed, that means these ligaments have to be held tout and tout meant they are going to be stretched. So when the ligaments are stretched, that means the whole actual 
um, lens becomes flat because it's stretching the lens, so it makes it flat. Right? This is just an oversimplification, but it will do the job. Right? Whereas if it's at maximum accommodation, this is the maximum here. What that means is we're going to have our ciliary muscles contracting. Right? So this is the contracted bulge, I mean the bicep bulge. This is the contraction part. But what that means is that these ligaments are actually a bit more loose. And this results in a rounder, this will result in a rounder lens. But what does it mean for the actual light rays? Remember, this is an object. All objects emit light. So this, will, this object will emit light in all different types of directions. But the only really light that we care about is the one that will actually reach our eyes. In this case, the ones that will move in this direction towards the eye itself. Uh, these ones aren't really important because while they're important, they don't really reach our eye. So for vision, these ones can almost be forgotten. And we're only focusing on the ones which are actually reaching our eyes, which are, in this case, mostly parallel, right? Because it's far away, that means all of these lines will be parallel. That means that the bending doesn't have to be as extreme. Right? So it's less be bending to be refracted to be able to hit this spot, but the refraction only has to be a certain amount not too much, otherwise it'll, it'll go overboard, otherwise it'll be bending too much, just a bit, which will be, a flat lens will do, flat lens is brilliant because it's going to bend a bit, but not too much, so for distant objects, we have a flat lens, remember, and the reason why the bending happens uh, only a certain amount is because there's less crystalline that this actual light will pass through, whereas if it's close by, this object is close by, it's still going to emit lights in all different types of directions, but because it's close by, you're going to have some light coming from the top, which is not parallel. Some is going to be parallel, this is going to be parallel. But the rest is not going to be parallel, which means to make sure we can put it all into one spot in the back of the eye, we need to have more refraction, we need to have more bending. Right? So this will have to bend a lot compared to the other example. And more bending means more refractive power. So these, the rounder lens has more refractive power and what that means is it bends the light more and that's because of these crystalline proteins. There's more of them in that diameter. Right? We often talk about the diameter for the lens. Diameter just means from one end to the other because the higher diameter means there's more crystalline protein in this round lens than there is in the flat lens which means there's more refraction happening which means there's more refractive power in the round than in the actual that lens. Now it's basically what you need to know for this dot point. Compare the changes of the refractive power of the lens from rest to maximum accommodation. So in this case, we have more um, refraction happening in this, in the rounded one, than in the flat, because the diameter is longer, which means there's more crystalline protein to actually be able to bend it into its small point, the focal point at the end. I hope that was useful.